I'm Pharmacist Ben, and it's time for another moment of truth. One of the more interesting mechanisms of cell behavior is the miraculous little entity's ability to cleanse itself. Chemicals inside the cell can break down poisons. Microscopic incinerators called lysosomes act as miniature molecular furnaces to burn waste material. And nutritional molecules like vitamin C, glutathione, phytochemicals quercetin, resveratrol, and curcumin can help deactivate poisons. And these microcosmic miracles can dump those poisons out of themselves with a process that's the cell's version of bowel movements, which eliminates wastes as well as enemy invaders and old, extra, or even foreign genetic material. The cell will actually wrap these substances in a bubble-like membrane called an exosome, which is then released from the cell into the surrounding fluids and ultimately into the lymphatic system. The coolest thing about these exosomes is their resemblance to viruses, which are also encapsulated genetic materials. In fact, many scientists believe that what are sometimes considered to be the signs of a viral infection are actually evidence of cellular waste and self-cleansing. These exosomes can even act like signaling molecules, triggering various immune system responses, including activation of inflammatory molecules and mobilization of white blood cells and inflammatory chemicals called cytokines. Could it be that what are considered signs of viruses in the blood are really only evidence of a protective response and cellular detoxification? Food for thought during these historic, unprecedented, and uncertain times. That's today's Moment of Truth. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and it's time for another Moment of Truth. While not considered an official medical diagnosis, it's still real. And according to researcher Dr. Michael Lamb, nearly 80% of Americans suffer from a health challenge called adrenal fatigue at some point in their lives. Classic signs of adrenal fatigue include anxiety, salt cravings, thin, brittle nails, sleep issues, and frequent colds and flus. And almost always elements of type 2 diabetes or prediabetes and hypothyroidism are involved. Midday energy crashes are also common. And if it's 3 p.m. and you think you need a Snickers bar or some other high sugar snack to keep you going, there's a good chance you're dealing with adrenal fatigue. Unfortunately, while it may seem obvious that ingesting glucose or fructose might give you some energy, which is true, the input of concentrated fast-burning sugar can also throw off hepatic detoxification chemistry, creating undue burden on the liver and wreaking havoc on the digestive and immune systems. Using green tea, licorice root, or ginseng instead of sweets can help you feel energetic without whacking out the liver the way sugar can, and in fact, using these botanical supplemental strategies can actually help boost immune activity. And licorice root contains phytochemicals that can support adrenal health and adrenal hormone secretion. Other ways to help your adrenals include relaxation strategies. After all, the adrenals are your stress glands, going ketogenic, and using nutritional supplements, particularly vitamin C, zinc, magnesium, and the B complex, especially vitamin B5. That's today's moment of truth. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and it's time for another moment of truth. I think of it as the most therapeutic and multifunctional of all the vitamins, but aside from its numerous health benefits for the blood, skin, digestive system, and brain, vitamin B3 is the only vitamin that the body will synthesize under conditions of deficiency. You have to make sure you're getting enough protein, though, as niacin is produced from the amino acid tryptophan, which is found in beef, poultry, and dairy, especially whey protein. Vitamin B3 significance is based on the crucial role it plays in regulating the activities and the energy production machinery of a cell in the form of NAD and NADH, the N standing for a form of niacin, which are now being marketed in anti-aging supplements. Vitamin B3 plays an important role in wound healing, so make sure you're taking some pre and post surgery. And these days, one of the most relevant and underappreciated roles for vitamin B3, which is also known as niacin and niacinamide, is for the immune system. Vitamin B3 has been shown to be antiviral, no small benefit in this corona crazy time that we're living in. In a study on HIV patients published in the journal Antiviral Therapy, high doses of vitamin B3 in the niacin form were found to be, quote, safe, tolerated, and efficacious, unquote. To benefit from niacin's antiviral properties, try taking 500 to 2,000 milligrams a day in divided doses for several days beginning at the onset of infection. If flushing's a problem, use the no-flush niacinamide form. 
That's today's moment of truth. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and it's time for another moment of truth. All the light we see ultimately streams from the sun in waves, which come in seven basic sizes or lengths. The shortest wave is violet. Ultraviolet is shorter still, but can't be seen. And at the other end of the light spectrum, there's red, the longest visible wave. If you go longer, you're in infrared, a radiation of light that's associated with healing. Spending time in an infrared sauna, which is like an ordinary sauna with a source of infrared waves, has been linked to health benefits, including detoxification, weight loss, and pain relief. And sitting in a sauna that's generating infrared light is so good for the heart that it's considered legitimate therapy by Japanese cardiologists. You can't see infrared light any more than you can ultraviolet, but it's just as real as any other light. You can also take advantage of ordinary visible red light, which also has soothing benefits and supports health and healing. Red light may be particularly important for building a strong immune system and the relaxing effects can help insomniacs. If you have problems falling asleep, buy a red light bulb. They're easily available on the internet. Then before you go to bed, try turning off all your regular lights and just leave on one or two red ones. You'll find yourself calming down and eventually getting drowsy and falling asleep more readily. And turn off your cell phone and your computer and even your TV, all of which emanate blue light that can counteract red light's sleep promoting properties. That's today's moment of truth. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. I'm Pharmacist Ben and it's time for another moment of truth. It's a jungle out there and in such a world where everything wants to survive, it should come as no surprise that plants for the most part seemingly innocent and benign, come equipped with a host of powerful defensive molecules specifically designed to punish the intrepid and ignorant ingester who dares to indulge. These botanical chemical weapons are proteins called lectins, and they can wreak havoc on human and animal bodies interacting with cells, causing them to clump and disrupting their functionality. The end result can be all manner of symptoms including constipation, diarrhea, bloating and cramping, autoimmunity, inflammation, brain fog, as well as PMS and other menstrual issues. Lectins are also anti-nutrients and they can block intestinal absorption of calcium, zinc, and iron, among other nutritional molecules. Pretty much all produce contains lectins, although grains, beans, nuts, dairy, and eggs are notorious culprits. Nightshade veggies like tomatoes, potatoes, and peppers are also sources of lectins. The best way to prevent lectin-related symptoms is to avoid eating the foods that contain them. Steaming, boiling, and cooking can destroy lectins, so can soaking and fermenting, particularly the ones in beans and grains. Slimy substances and seaweeds like red algae and kelp, as well as okra fruit and slippery elm can protect against the problematic proteins. And you can take lectin blocking supplements that are readily available in health food stores and on the internet. That's today's moment of truth. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and it's time for another moment of truth. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and there's no telling what accounts for something being identified as beautiful. And aside from its superficial connotations involving the look and the appearance of our bodies, true physical beauty is more about our health. From an evolutionary perspective, what is considered beautiful is a signal to others that we're vital and that we're fit. Of course, beauty isn't only about our appearance and our bodies. The world is filled with mountains, and forests, and sunrises, and other beautiful things, and recognizing them has neurochemical implications. Gazing at and appreciating something that's beautiful turns on an area of the brain called the MOC that's linked to pleasure and reward. We feel good when we see something beautiful. What's more, MOC activation strengthens the immune system, improves decision-making skills, and supports the regulation of our emotions. If you want to leverage the benefits of beauty, try to find something beautiful to appreciate every day. Pay especially close attention to things that you wouldn't typically think of as beautiful. Your refrigerator, a sidewalk, or an ordinary mason jar. And sounds can be beautiful too. A baby's coo, a kitten's purr, a child's singing voice are all wonderful examples of audio beauty. In fact, our environment is jam-packed with these kinds of examples, and once we open up to them, we're likely to find beauty everywhere and realize that despite its obvious problems, our world is a very beautiful place. That's today's moment of truth. Have an especially beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and it's time for another moment of truth. According to the World Happiness Report, 
the United Nations annual assessment of the state of mind of humanity, the United States ranks 19th in life satisfaction among all UN member countries. Authors of the report place the blame for Americans' low happiness scores on dissatisfaction with their health, the government, and social conditions among multiple other causes. However, a more succinct factor for our collective relative unhappiness is the expectation we have that our state of mind depends on our circumstances and that we can only be happy when we make them more to our liking. A much more powerful and effective strategy for improving our sense of well-being is to become internally focused. Do we actually really need outside events and experiences to trigger positive emotions? Isn't what we're really seeking more about an inward state of well-being? Next time you're less than happy, try generating a sense of contentment and satisfaction, maybe even joy, for no reason. Write down five or ten ways you want to feel and practice simply accessing those feelings independent of life circumstances. What you're likely to find is that the link between your outside experiences and your subjective feelings is fabricated and much more tenuous than you had assumed. Once you understand and realize this, the way you feel can be liberated from your circumstances and you'll find it much easier to experience contentment, happiness, peace of mind, or whatever feelings you like, whenever you like, regardless of what happens to be showing up in your life. That's today's moment of truth. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. I'm Pharmacist Ben and it's time for another moment of truth. With many Americans spending the last couple of months isolated in quarantine, it's understandable that weights and waist sizes are on the way up. For many of us enduring shelter in place, physical activity has decreased, boredom and stress have increased, and being stuck at home has made avoiding the siren song of our kitchens, cabinets, and refrigerators nearly impossible. If you've put on pandemic pounds, or you just want to prevent them, it's imperative that you get off the couch. Schedule specific times during the day to take a walk or go on a run, put on some music and dance. If you get a few exercise bands off the internet, you can get a quality workout in a few minutes at home and invest in a mini trampoline or rebounder. It'll cost you about $70 or so, about as much as a monthly gym membership, and jumping on it for five or 10 minutes a day can improve heart and lung health, strengthen immunity, and support lymphatic drainage and detoxification. Interestingly, you can also expend calories by eating. In fact, up to 10% of the calories we burn every day is the result of the thermic effect of food, or TEF. Physical activity will increase TEF, so can eating unprocessed grains and veggies. And keep meal frequency low. Several studies have shown that enjoying one single larger meal a day can result in up to a 30% increase in TEF compared with indulging in three or four smaller ones. That's today's moment of truth. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. I'm Pharmacist Ben and it's time for another moment of truth. If you're a guy in your 50s or older, you may have noticed that you're getting up two or three or more times a night to go to the bathroom. Aside from the inconvenience and loss of sleep, potential consequences of long-term urinary issues include UTIs, bladder stones, and incontinence. The condition is related to a common physiological problem called benign prostatic hypertrophy, or BPH, which causes the prostate gland to press against the urinary plumbing. This in turn leads to irritation and obstruction, and ultimately the classic symptoms of frequent urination and incomplete emptying of the bladder. BPH affects 30 million Americans and over half of all men over 50, and is known colloquially as an enlarged prostate. These days, BPH is unfortunately a normal part of aging, and is associated at least partially with nutritional deficiencies and poor dietary choices, which is good news because it means that while 150,000 men have the condition surgically corrected every year and millions more are on medication, by supplementing and changing the way we eat, prostate enlargement can be reversed and subsequent urinary problems prevented without medical intervention. To shrink the prostate, it's important to avoid fried and processed fats and carbs Omega-3s from fish and flaxseed oil can be helpful. A daily dose of zinc picolinate 50 milligrams and vitamin E 400 IU is a must. Using progesterone 2 or 3% cream can help. And nothing beats 300 to 400 milligrams a day of beta cytosterol for eliminating the symptoms of BPH. That's today's moment of truth. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. I'm Pharmacist Ben and it's time for another moment of truth. While it's not often considered as such, the mind is integrated with the body into a unified mind-body whole and one cannot exist without the other.
The neurological link between the mind and the body is called the autonomic or involuntary nervous system, and it is this complex of nerves that's responsible for various ordinarily unconscious bodily processes, including blood pressure, the functions of the thyroid, adrenals, and kidney, digestion, breathing, and heart rate. The autonomic nervous system directs nerve stimulation to either prepare for battle or for relaxation, and surprise, surprise, all chronic illness is preceded and marked by a body that's prepared for battle. It's out of ease or diseased. The key to reversing all the symptoms of chronic illness or dis-ease is to learn to activate the relaxation or ease division of the autonomic nervous system, which is controlled by the vagus nerve. And the quickest and fastest way to activate the vagus nerve to set the body back into ease is to practice slow, deep, rhythmic breathing. Breathe in and out through the nose for five to 10 seconds each way. Activate the diaphragm by breathing deeply into the belly and try to maintain a nice steady rhythm. Within seconds, you're gonna to start to feel relaxed and over time, your blood pressure will drop, digestion will improve, you'll have more energy and an improved sense of well-being and you might be adding years to your life. That's today's moment of truth. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and it's time for another moment of truth. Human beings love sugar, but unfortunately, the combination of our brain's love of sugar and its readily available nature has resulted in a health crisis of biblical proportions. All that energy contained in the glorious, delectable crystals of sweetness is easily stored as fat and has led to the greatest obesity and diabetic epidemic in the history of the world. Over 100 million Americans are obese or overweight and diabetic or on the way, and the numbers are increasing dramatically every year. If you're stuck on the sugar train and wanna get off, consider eating more protein. The body can derive energy from amino acids as well as from sugar, and this can help you withstand the hypoglycemia that can lead to sugar addiction. Fiber from veggies can slow down sugar release and help prevent crashing, and water will dilute blood sugar, and exercise can support sugar metabolism in the muscles. And there are great nutrients that can help the body handle sugar. Alpha lipoic acid, chromium, selenium, magnesium, and zinc, and the B vitamins all have powerful sugar processing properties and can make it much easier for you to kick the habit. And the best way to indulge your sweet tooth is with berries and smaller fruits like plums and apricots. The phytonutrients and the peels help the body deal with sugar. The water in the fruits is particularly helpful for the skin, connective tissue, and organs and fruit sugars are well balanced with nutrients that can help the body metabolize all that sweetness. That's today's moment of truth. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and it's time for another moment of truth. Everything that shows up in our physical world begins to take shape internally, mentally, before it shows up externally in our reality, and understanding this is a key to effective living. The mind, which unlike the brain to which it is often compared and confused with, is actually not a thing, but an activity. Mind is a verb, not a noun, and it refers to the thinking process. When this process feels chaotic and random, it can make life miserable and be a source of much mental, emotional, and physical duress. And while it's naturally nonstop and by nature difficult to control, what we can do is learn to separate ourselves from its activity. Most importantly, we want to be aware of it by its byproducts, which are thoughts. Much of the day we're thinking thoughts without paying attention to them, and while we may not know that they're there, they still have an impact. Thoughts may be subconscious to us, but they're not to the body, which is intimately aware of them and can respond with high blood pressure, suppressed immunity, psoriasis, acne, and eczema, and insomnia, among other health challenges. To become aware of what you're thinking, practice spending time noticing your thoughts. For a couple of minutes a day, instead of thinking thoughts, or even worse, believing them, try just being aware of them without being attached. Just observe thoughts go by from a detached point of view. When you're able to watch your thoughts from this perspective, you'll begin to control their impact on your body and you'll experience a sense of physical well-being and peace and freedom from an out-of-control mind. That's today's moment of truth. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and it's time for another moment of truth. The three maxims of ancient Greece are seriously sage advice expressed in three very simple phrases. Know thyself, nothing to excess, and surety brings ruin. And while these three pithy pearls of wisdom were initially articulated nearly 2,400 years ago, 
Their acumen and usefulness is just as important today as it was then. Know thyself can be thought of as insight, literally insight, seeing inside ourselves to assess the whys and whats of what we do and who we are. To live an effective life, we should be constantly and endlessly scrutinizing our emotions, deconstructing our motivations, and examining our beliefs, shifting attention away from external events to inner experiences to assess what is going on inside ourselves that's affecting how reality is showing up for us. Nothing to excess is about living with moderation, or as the religious scholars like to say, with temperance. There's nothing that we can do that cannot be moderated. Eating without gorging, working without slaving, and drinking without getting drunk are all examples of human activities that can be enjoyed, but enjoyed with restraint. And finally, surety brings ruin, reminds us that to live effectively, we need to live scientifically. Our beliefs must be examined as if under a microscope, and what we know for sure subject to critical thinking. How is it that we know what we know? Surety brings ruin, warns us to beware of certainty because in the words of Mark Twain, it ain't what we don't know that gives us trouble, it's what we do know that just ain't so. That's today's moment of truth. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. I'm Pharmacist Ben and it's time for another moment of truth. Female hair loss, or alopecia, is a common condition that affects two-thirds of postmenopausal women, and eventually all women will develop at least some thinning. The condition involves hormones, including thyroid, estrogen, and a powerful substance called DHT, and it's usually associated with low energy and a rundown feeling. You're unlikely to find creams or shampoos that can do much to reverse hair loss, but fortunately, there are lots of nutritional and dietary strategies that you can use. Digestion, blood sugar, and the thyroid are the most important things to address. All female alopecia involves at least some degree of digestive distress, so make sure to eliminate problem foods and take probiotics and digestive enzymes with your meals. Diabetes or pre-diabetes are linked to hair loss, so go keto and use sugar metabolizing supplements including B vitamins, chromium, and vanadium. Healthy hair requires a healthy thyroid. Vitamin C and A and the minerals selenium, iodine, and iron are important and supplementing with essential fatty acids, zinc, and enjoying foods like spinach, mushrooms, and kale can help reduce the influence of DHT and support hair growth, as can treatment with oral or topical progesterone. While none of these strategies can specifically target your hair follicles and cure baldness, taking advantage of them can help you feel better, stronger, and healthier with improved energy and a zest for life, and more than likely, your new healthy body will take care of your female alopecia on its own. That's today's moment of truth. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and it's time for another moment of truth. The human body is made up of trillions of cells of over 200 types, yet somehow they've gotten together in such a tightly coordinated fashion that we hardly ever think about the fact that we're made up of such a vast number of independent working parts. For this coordination to effectively take place, these solitary cellular beings must have a way of communicating in essence, talking to each other to let each one know what is required of them to contribute at any given moment to assure the coherent functioning of the body's various tissues, organs, and structures. This system relies on commands, which are communicated via chemicals called signaling molecules that basically tell a cell to perform. All cells in the body are responsive to signaling molecules, and that includes the keratinocytes, or skin cells. One of the most important skin cell signaling molecules is vitamin A a name given to a family of chemicals that influence every type of cell, including skin cells. These signaling properties of vitamin A exert dramatic effects on skin cell growth and development, and deficiencies can result in a wide range of cutaneous issues, including accelerated aging, psoriasis, acne, eczema, cancer, and keratosis pylorus, also known as chicken skin. And the fact that the body cannot produce it makes using topical retinol and enjoying fish, dairy, eggs, and other vitamin A-containing foods, and using supplements a must, especially for addressing or preventing skin health issues of all kinds. That's today's moment of truth. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now. Definitely get yourself a copy of Dr. Wallach's cookbook. This is basically a textbook about how to cook without the bad foods, particularly oil and gluten, this is 300 pages stuffed full of recipes without the bad foods that they're usually made from. And definitely check out my book, Fake Diseases. It covers all of the major topics that come up like birth defects, blood sugar problems, bone and joint problems, cancer, autoimmune problems, and more. And it's on Amazon for just 9 dollars
And of course, make sure to check out our food page, Notice Foods, that's on YouTube and at Notice Foods on Instagram. We have a lot of content up there teaching you how to cook without the bad foods that Dr. Wallach describes and Dr. Glidden's 12 bad foods, all of that, all of the rules that you need to know. And we have experienced chefs and bakers who will answer the questions in those inboxes. And for more health information, make sure to check out our YouTube or our Instagram. And you can actually message us there on the Instagram account and we will respond to every message.